This is a video on thyroid-related laboratory abnormalities. We're going to be discussing several thyroid disorders listed in this column to the left here, as well as their lab abnormalities that help you differentiate them. The three labs that we're interested in are TSH, T4, and T3. T4 and T3 are your thyroid hormones themselves, and TSH is a thyroid secreting hormone. It's the hormone that triggers the thyroid to release thyroid hormone. It's important to look at TSH because it helps us understand how the body's feedback mechanisms might change the body's response to TSH levels, and TSH helps us make the diagnosis in many cases. In the right column here, we have some notes, and I'll kind of talk through them as we go along. First on here is classic primary hyperthyroidism, and this can come in three forms. Um, it's helpful to differentiate the three forms based on their gross pathology. First one is Graves' disease. This is a diffuse enlargement of the thyroid, can present with a diffuse goiter, and it's the most common type of hyperthyroidism in the United States. Next is Plummer disease, also an enlargement of the thyroid, but it's not diffuse, it's not smooth, it's multi-nodular. It looks like the thyroid is enlarged with a bunch of bumps. Lastly is toxic adenoma. This is one large bump. So again, differentiate between the three types of classic primary hyperthyroidism with these uh, gross pathology. Graves' disease is diffusely enlarged. Plummer disease is enlarged and nodular. Toxic adenoma is one big nodule. In all kinds of primary hyperthyroidism, you'll have high thyroid hormone, as you might expect, and the body's response is to decrease TSH to try to reduce that thyroid hormone. So TSH is going to be low, whereas your T4 and T3 are going to be high. Subclinical hyperthyroidism is next. In this case, you'll have normal levels of your thyroid hormone, but you'll still have a slightly low TSH. There are a few reasons this can happen. It could be central hypothyroidism. It could also be from a non-thyroidal illness. A lot of times people with chronic diseases, if they have chronic inflammation, they might have a subclinical hyperthyroidism. They could also be recovering from a hyperthyroid disorder. For instance, if they had Graves' disease and they just had surgery, they might have a subclinical hyperthyroidism as they recover, and some cases of pregnancy can cause this as well. Next is T3 toxicosis. As you might expect, T3 is high in this one, and your TSH is again low in response. Your body's trying to reduce your thyroid activity, so it's decreasing TSH. This can happen in some forms of Graves' disease, in mild Graves' disease or early Graves' disease, for instance. You can also have exogenous administration of T3 hormone. Some people do this to maybe lose weight. There are also some medications that can cause a bunch of T3 to be released and cause a T3 toxicosis. T4 toxicosis is similar. You'll have high levels of T4 and in response a low TSH. Amiodarone is a cardiac rhythm drug that's known to cause T4 toxicosis as a side effect, a pretty serious side effect. And you can also have exogenous administration of T4 as well. It's called levothyroxine, and it's commonly used to treat the hypothyroidism disorders that we're going to talk about very soon. And if you abuse that, you can end up with a T4 toxicosis. Lastly is TSH producing tumor. This is kind of like a secondary hyperthyroidism. This is usually in the pituitary because pituitary is where the TSH comes from. So TSH can be elevated and in response your T4 and T3 uh, will also be elevated. Um, and TSH, as we said uh, a little while ago, thyroid secreting hormone. Next, let's talk about the hypothyroidism disorders. First is primary hypothyroidism. Here you'll have low, TSH, uh, sorry, low T4 and low T3, and your TSH is gonna be high in response. So your body is doing its normal feedback mechanism. It's detecting the low T4, the low T3, and it's ramping up that TSH to try to increase T4 and T3. Um, in this case, there's a reason that your T4 and T3 cannot be increased. The most common reason is autoimmune. In the United States, Hashimoto's disease and autoimmune disease is the most common cause of hypothyroidism. In other countries, you might have iodine deficiency. Of course, iodine is used to make the thyroid hormones, so if you don't have enough iodine, you can also end up with a primary hypothyroidism. But again, remember that your TSH is high because your body is trying to, uh, trying to make up for it, trying to increase your levels of T4 and T3. A secondary hypothyroidism is, again, low thyroid hormone, but your TSH is either normal or low. This is most commonly caused by a hypofunctioning pituitary. So it's kind of the opposite of the TSH producing tumor, where you are making too much TSH. In this case, your pituitary is doing the opposite. It's making too little TSH. And the response is to have hypothyroidism, low thyroid hormone. Lastly is subclinical hypothyroidism. This is a high TSH, just like in primary hypothyroidism, 
but your T4 and T3 aren't necessarily responding much. So your T4 is normal, your T3 can be normal or low. I hope this review of thyroid-related disorders was helpful and helped you understand the lab abnormalities that might help you differentiate them. Thank you for listening.